All right, we're back at Glenn's Lawn again for a bit of an update that we promised you guys. So it's been what? How long since the last seeding? Well, I went back and I had a look at the thumbnail that we took when I put the new seed down. Yeah. January the 13th or 15th or something. So it's been three months, give or take. Three months? Three months, yep. okay. And, and basically to go back on the process here, we've done a lot on this lawn. We started with a fruit application. Mm -hmm. Then we knocked down the weeds using maybe broadsword. I think we might have used another product in there. Only broadsword. Just broadsword. Oh, I killed prickles before that. Okay, yep, so you yep. prickles and then we did broadsword. Correct. Then you came along and you dethatched the lawn. So I mowed it really low. Yep. Did a dethatching. Yep. Then you bought the core aerator in. Yep. And then you bought two or three cube of topsoil. It was more like four cube of topsoil. Okay, four cube of topsoil. And that was, you know, really nicely screened. Yep. Really expensive topsoil. And then I put some seed down first. Yeah, we did our first seed application. First seed application. Start a fruit. Yep, yep, and that was 100% Kaikuya seed, because yes. you can get blends. Yep. I didn't want blend, you told me not to get blend. That was a pure, like that, that tiny was little fine seed. Tiny little fine seed, yep. which was really hard to see where I was spreading it. Yeah. Because it was so fine. There's areas where I definitely over sow, and there's areas where I definitely under sow. Yep. And then we put down that nice team um, screen topsoil. Yep. We leveled it out with the leveling break. And then I did a little bit of an overseed as well. Yep. And you came back probably a week later, two weeks later. Or it was a very long time. So I had areas where the seed really took. Yep. And I had areas where the seed didn't, and we'll take you down there, yep. but it didn't take as well. So then I did another overseed application. And at that point, the birds were getting into the seed. Yep. And so I had to put down um, mesh and I had to cover up areas. And so the overseed didn't, in those specific areas, didn't really work that well. And that would have been probably about a month's worth of me mucking around with that. And I just let this whole thing grow. It looked like yep. a paddock in here, like you could put cows in here. <laughs> it did. It looked pretty <laughs> bad. I mean, you've got the height down now. So I think probably the best thing for us to do, it's been three months. Let's go to the front yard and let's kind of walk our way through and you can talk us through some areas. Some areas are looking really good. Some are looking like they need a bit more work um, and you're bringing the height of cut down as well. Well, I'm on so the lowest setting I can with that Ryobi 36 volt yep. um, mower there and I think it's 25 mil. Yeah, Give it's or exposed take. a lot of runners because you're training it down. So training it down. head out the front and we'll show you what it looks like. So this area here is the Council Verge. Now this is the area that had the least amount of seed, it had the least amount of fur, it had the least amount of topsoil. Everything that was left over just went on here and this is the area that is the worst. That section over there is not too bad, but this here we've got quite a lot of weed in here, we've got sort of mixed grass blends, um, it's a bit patchy in areas and it is slowly starting to knit together, but this is just where all the leftover product went and um, I suppose in the next application of when I do my new topsoil and things like that, this is where we'll be able to bring this back and make this look nice. I think the best part of your lawn right now, I mean it looks pretty good coming in from the street here until you get up closer and you see some of the exposed runners. But I think if we head over the other side, we walk down... You mean in this section here? Yeah, th this is looking really good. So here is a big... What used to be, I think when cars pull in the driveway here, they sort of pull on and park on this sort of area. So this here was all very pitted and, and quite deep in here and also water would pull in this area. So I had to bring the height up quite a lot here. So a lot of soil went into this area and I brought it up and this was an area where seed didn't take as well. So I've had to over sow this section a little bit, but you're correct. This area here is where we can see quite a lot of exposed runners. Yeah, I mean, this here, you know, if we can get everything looking like that, there's no exposed runners through that area at all. But you're right, when you start to come left, we see a lot of areas like this. But you've only just started cutting at the lowest height that that Ryobi mower goes, what, within the last week or two? Yeah, so every mower, what I did is I just brought it down another step, down another step, down another step, and I'm at the lowest. To go any lower, I'm probably looking to get into some real mower territory, but um, for now, we'll just... I. So I'm really unhappy with the exposed runners, right? I don't really know what to do about it too much. I think what's going to happen, we're just going to have to keep the cut low and we have to train them to come in and grow deeper and deeper and hopefully they will disappear. I don't really know. This is, this is a new problem for me. Yeah, well it is. I, I think it's just the fact that um, you've had it growing quite long for quite a while. And they've sat up quite high. And it sat up high and the runners decided, hey look, we can grow up as well as sideways. So now you're cutting it regularly, twice a week at least on this lawn at the moment, on that lower setting. I think they'll start to train sideways. They'll realise we can't grow up, we need to grow sideways. So I think you are going to end up with a lot of exposed runners on the top of here for a wee while. But if you keep that regu regular mowing up, um, you don't want to get lazy on this. You don't want to leave it too no, much to cut. You want to make sure you're cutting twice a week. Then we move over to this area here, right? There was a lot of work 
gun particularly close up to this fence where we tried to bring the levels up a bit like there was heavy heavy soil that we added over there so a lot of soil went in here and because i brought so much soil in that meant that the seed didn't take as well so i had to re over sow this area now because there is a general runoff in this direction what happens is you put all this nice soil down you put all this nice seed in and then you get basically rains and then it all washes this way so it essentially ross basically run off all the way down that way and it was the same for this area all that seed that came in there sort of just ran down that way now this is a bit of a, a new learning curve for us is that i should have really used sand in here because what's happened is the, to the top soil has, has shrunk and it's moved and it's um, become compacted and i've got another divot there so i'm almost back to where i was now if i had used sand it probably wouldn't have compressed as much it would have aided in drainage and i probably wouldn't be in a situation but anyway it is what it is i think next time around when you go and do this again i don't know closer to the end of the year when we get into growing season well the around kaikuya, about november because salmon. for the kaikuya seed to germinate you need 20 degrees or more every day yeah and so i think that season opens in november yeah so we'll bring in probably some more sand do some light leveling and, and that will probably be your process there'll probably be no more topsoil that you bring in on this moving forward and this will just be filling out like this area here is probably where the truck had dumped most of the topsoil and so we were taking from this area and i think we've almost taken too much from this year and you can see that we've got a whole heap of different, different levels and also that's where it all run off down that way so the thing that we're probably going to struggle with here a little bit and really keen on anyone's feedback if they're experienced and how we can get rid of it we've got quite a bit of cooch grass going through this area here so hoping that the kaikuia will take it over but if yeah, anyone this is has, cooch in here yeah we've got quite a bit through here if anyone's got any ideas as to how we can selectively remove the cooch grass I don't know if it's going to be easy but um drop us a comment below we'll be keen to know um at the moment basically the theory is we're just hoping that the kaikuia beats it out well that is the prominent species in this lawn it is. and so that's kind of the theory that hopefully it will take over and um if we come back to this area you can see that there's some strange weeds growing so this is some broadleaf weed here and actually the most common type is this little very fine leaf thing there can you see that yeah i think your broadsword's gonna get that i've just done a broadsword application this morning so you find out in a week whether they yellow off and hopefully that will get rid of it and then so you can see that it's patch in here but the runners will fill this out so it's kind of like a double-edged sword right we've got the runners on top which make this whole lawn look quite ugly real close up but at the same time you want the runners to fill in the areas where there's not much seed you know so it's kind of like ugh, yeah. which one do you want i think you keep cutting low i mean looking down the end of the lawn here this looks fantastic now oh this it's like a, it's like a car right when you're standing back at it it's yeah. make it all real shiny then, then you get up real it. close and you go oh not so bad <laughs> so your lawn maintenance on here has been pretty regimented over the last couple of months now hasn't it so you're basically using four five different products now in order to upkeep <clears throat> yeah so we've come into the winter months so it shifted slightly but what i was doing is i was watering the lawn pretty regularly to get that seed growing um and I've been mowing really regular. So a couple of times a week just to bring that height down and I've been using the Ryobi lawnmower, the 36 volt. I've also got the 36 volt um, edger which keeps my edges nice and nice and crisp and the blower and also just, just a weed eater. Now, when you come along the side here, it's strange, right? So I can't get the mower up close enough, but then I get the weed eater in here and I actually end up chopping too much. So you end up doing too much damage to these sides. So these are just growing out a little bit and then I will bring the cut down. But this is an area where I think even on really nice lawns that um, people sort of struggle around up fences and stuff like that. This was all pretty well established Kaikuya lawn, but as we come into the sort of this area here, we had no lawn here. Now, if you want to go back and have a look at the original videos, this was all bare dirt. There was nothing here. It was very hard to even get like grass to run in and, and to grow into here so this was just all nothing and this is actually probably the best part of the lawn this is the area that i did first and this is the area where it's got the most topsoil it got the most um i put too much seed down but this is the area that looks really nice we started coming down here to the side of the house and we start to get into some problems so up against the house you can see how it's all browned off and there's a cat down there that likes to dig the seed out and do whatever in the corner there and this is also the area that doesn't get as much water it lacks a bit of sunlight and so naturally that's an area that's going to struggle for growth but the positive thing about this area is that this is not grass long term no. this is going to be your shed spot 
you'll probably have some stones, uh, maybe some concrete out here as well. Yeah. So this is just a temporary fix until we have the yard. Uh, exactly, you can see it's just all like a storage pit down the back there. So we will turn this into some, you're right, some sort of area here that won't be grass. It'll probably end somewhere here, something like that. But this place, well that area there is all under development and, and watch that space and we'll definitely fill you in with the, the video content there. So now let's jump into how I'm maintaining this with our liquid ferts and our granular ferts. I actually find this bit quite funny because you find them why do you find this funny because six months ago i had you, none of this you you had none of this you come to me for lawn advice and to borrow some tools and you, you've started to build yourself a bit of a uh, bit of a toolkit here but, that, but that's what happens right is that you you know pun intended here you sow the seed on something you're like clean you need to sort your lawn out I'm like, yep. okay i'll sort my lawn out i come to you and i you tell me like how to get started or how to get to a certain level and then I'm like no nah, i'm gonna smoke this dude i'm gonna go research everything and then it's like oh now you're asking me, hey, what do I do? When do I do this? Well, I think the, the piece here that, that I understand, I know how to mow a lawn, so I've got the mowers sorted. Well, so yeah, so the tools I use to maintain are all Ryobi, right? Yep. I use the Ryobi 36 volt lawnmower. I use the, um, the 18 volt um, weed eater and I use the 36 volt edger. And that's what I'm using just to cut the grass, clean up the edges, make it all look nice and presentable. You understand that thing? Yeah, because you borrowed mine for uh, quite some time and you've <laughs> gone and outdone me here with a 20 litre. So I've got the 10 litre lawn boy. I think this is a really handy tool, especially with a lawn like this where it is quite a big area. You've got a lot of long runs. You're going up and down this area. Lawn boy is really, really easy to use. You're not having to manually pump anything. And well, then you've well, got no, 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 no. So with that, right, yeah. you, have, you have really two options. You either go for a lawn boy like that where you walk and it sprays, yep. or you get yourself a backpack and you have yourself a pump with a spray that you can get uh, battery powered ones or you have like a back runner of sprays. Yep. I don't like any of those. No, I mean I think there is a place to have one of those as well as this. But if I think you were that doing some more spot treat sort of stuff yeah, maybe. Or, or if you wanted to have this specific for one type of chemical you're using and that for something else. And the reason why I got the, the 20 litre is because 280 square metres of lawn here. So I need roughly 15 litres, give or take, depending on how we're mixing our products up here. And so 10 litres means I've got to fill it up twice. So I used yours, yours is 10 litres. And I was like, oh, it's just another couple of dollars. I'll just get the 20 litre. Yep. But then it is a little bit heavier to push around and to try and move a little bit, it's a little bit heavier. So I guess there's trade-offs there. And, then, and I, I use that with these liquid fertilizers. Yeah, down so here. this is your program, right? So you've gone all NZLA, really good website. Heaps of different products. You've got some lawn programs on there as well. And walk, walk me through kind of what's been your process with these over the last three months. So I did quite a lot of research on the products that I was going to use. And what I found is that NZLA website basically had it written out for me, almost like a workout program, yep. you know? It said, first week of this month, do this. Third week of this month, do that. And so I was like, well, this is really easy. It's, you know, it's basically a good gateway into learning about these products. So I just started um, with them. And so the, the wedding, so the, I've been using this in the summer months. And so within the summer months, you have a wedding agent. And the wedding agent just helps to keep the lawn moist in summer months. And they say that you can actually have your lawn five times as wet than if you were just regularly watering it. So it helps to hold the moisture in there. That's really good for areas where you have lots of water restrictions. So here, summer months, you can't water your lawn as frequently and as often as you like. And so that's a really helpful um, product to be using just to help keep the lawn nice and moist. So Root Health, this is a um, kelp based product. And so um, it is designed specifically to help the roots grow better and only the roots without impacting the ability of the leaf to grow so this is just designed for the roots so humic plus is just a, a nutrient so it's for the um, to provide nutrients to the soil and also to the leaf of the plant and then we have liquid boost so liquid boost is a iron based product you've had experience with iron based products before yeah typically granular form which you're also using but this is something they use like on uh, golf courses sport um, sport fields prior to events to get it looking really green right yeah and it, so it will correct any iron deficit in the lawn and you're right the iron product makes it look nice and green nice and lush and then i'm um, I've done some research. So we have had experience with the Ryobi, um, it's called a broadcast um, spreader. And that, you know, it's got like a wheel in it and it flings the product everywhere. So for your granular ferts and also for your seed, but you can't control where that seed's going. And so if you're using an iron-based product, like if I came up here to the path, I would fling some granular fert that would have iron deposits in it. And I have to make sure that I basically brush the path down because if that got wet, it would leave iron deposits on the, on the driveway or on the patio here. 
And so I wanted a little bit more control and I actually can see the fertilizer or the seed being dropped. And so I've used, well, I've picked up the Scott's drop spreader. It drops it downwards. And so I can be very specific. So when I come up to the sides and stuff, I can be um, very specific about where the product is being dropped. And so I like this, it it's takes about four, four kilo capacity. And so I've mainly been using this with the granular fert. I've been using an all season slow release granular fert. And um, that's just a slowly release the nutrients into the into the grass and into the soil over a longer period of time but now that we're out of the summer months we're coming into more sort of autumn and sort of winter months then um, NZLA sort of changed their products a little bit we do keep a few of these products but we also change it out for a few different ones and so I'm just getting into the, what the few different products do in the next couple of weeks is when I start to use them and so I'm sure in another couple of months from now we'll update you on those products and we'll be able to come back and update you on the progress of the lawn so that's it from omni garage it's a three month update on how my lawn is growing so if you're interested in this content subscribe to the channel and that will keep you updated for when we release more lawn content thanks for watching catch you on the next one